Good morning. My name is Carlos Zaniolo uh, with the UCLA Computer Science Department. And today I'm going to talk about scalability and performance for big data algorithms using logic and aggregates. Okay. <laughs> big data has profoundly impacted many computer fields. And uh, for the databases, uh, we have seen a number of systems, special purpose systems being developed for graphs and tensor databases. However, general purpose databases are still preferable if, along with the traditional application, they can support graph and machine learning application with uh, great performance and scalability. Until now, the non-monotonic problem has prevented logic-based language such as data log from achieving the expressive power level desired for dense applications. Okay, can we ch change that? That's true for data log, but also for SQL. Well, let's understand what the strength and the weaknesses of logic are. Okay, the strength is the form of declarative semantics, portability, optimization, scalability. Okay, the weaknesses fall from the fact that for the to reach the potential expressive power, uh, both recursion and negation are needed as, and they are often incompatible. The non-monotonicity of negation compromises the fixed point semantic recursion. The non-monotonic problem is not unique for databases, has been vexing AI for several decades. And eventually, there was a convergence uh, of research which led to the consensus uh, stable models, semantics, as uh, the consensus solution. Unfortunately, stable model does not provide the constructive semantics. It's only declarative semantics, okay? So work is continue on uh, various, trying to identify various subclasses of semantics. Um, such for instance stratifying negation, but uh, this stratifying, which is now widely accepted, however, stratifying negation does not have the expressive power performance uh, which uh, are needed for advanced applications. So here we are, and we propose a paradigm shift for logic-based language. We use, use set aggregates instead, instead of negation, okay? And this is because complex big data algorithms can be expressed concisely and efficiently using set aggregates, okay? And this was shown by several projects, Socialite at Stanford, Media at University of Washington, and of course, uh, our UCLA project, uh, RA Recursive Aggregate SQL, Recursive Aggregate Data Log, okay? But at UCLA, we also address key semantic issues, because after all, aggregates are still non-monotonic. I introduced powerful optimization parallelization method beyond bulk synchronous parallelism. And of course, develop library of high performance algorithms for graph machine learning data mining application, which made interoperable with other Apache Spark application. Okay. To explain this, the key issue of the semantic or the stable model semantics, let's have the situation where we have clubs, okay, where we have a number of founders, A, B, C, D, E of founders, and then new members are inducted into the club once they, they get three recommendations, three nominations by existing member, okay? So the nomination are shown by uh, arcs in the graph. For instance, A nominate F and B nominate F, okay? So the question is, who are the current member of the, of the, of the club, okay? Okay, we start with uh, the founding members, which are inducted to the club with a count, uh, uh, a very high count, the 1,000, which is distinguished for the, from the rest. And then from the rest, we have that uh, for every, you know, take the second rule there, yes, take a look at that if somebody is in, already in the club, from is already in the club, and if this person nominates from two, okay, then uh, in the head of the second rule, we count this nomination, okay? And when, of course, then this nomination in the head of the rule, uh, in the nomination R greater than three, then we 
uh, in, uh, admit this person to the club, okay? The problem, of course, is not performing the incremental counting, okay? The problem with the semantics is in the fact that step one in semantics requires that you cannot, from the second rule, you cannot uh, show any result until you have reached the absolute final maximum result, okay? Which, uh, so therefore, in our execution, of course, uh, A, B, C, F comes uh, the count to three, all right? And that's okay, then you can show the F as a count to three, okay? But for instance, for G, G, D, E, having a count, uh, giving a count of three to G, you cannot show that result, you cannot propagate to the next stable level. G must wait until also half uh, issue this nomination, whereby then G gets its final count of four, okay? And that's the stable model, all right? However, if you have arcs, like if for some reason G also decides to nominate F, it comes out that uh, F doesn't get its final count, which is four, and G doesn't get its final count until it's four, okay? Uh, so what happened is that uh, basically uh, we cannot feel, F cannot show its count three, and G cannot show its count three, and the result is that no, um, basically, a result is produced, okay, except ABC, except ABC. Neither F nor G are inducted to the club, okay? And we don't have a stable model, right? So the important thing is that when there is a cycle, we don't have a stable model, okay? When, if there is, uh, then there is no cycle, then we have a stable model. So the absence of cycle is uh, some kind of condition which is easy and simple enough for that every programmer, every undergraduate student can understand and cope with and they can quote the fact that they have a stable model of semantic without really knowing what it is because the fact that uh, the absence of, of cycle guarantees stable model semantics. Of course, okay, of course, all right. If they use the, the of course, if this, the, our program is not sure that in fact uh, the, you know, of the, 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 you know, the, properties of his program or is not sure about the fact that database can, you know, is, is, does not have a dirty data, so there is not have any cycle due to dirty data. Then uh, there is another test, you know, posteriori test, which can be performed by simply computing the candidate stable model, okay? And so we have this CSM candidate stable model and we store the facts and then we had this additional, you know, the red arrow uh, goal to the last rule and we run our, our program. If the program delivered the same result, then we are guaranteed to have a stable model, okay? So this is also very simple for programming we're used to test. Also, it can be automated by the system. The most important thing is that once you have a semantic form count, for count, you can extend it to other aggregates because other aggregates, for instance, sum, only requires a monotonic operation like sum in the incremental computation. Sum equals sum plus next value, okay? And then, and then the final difficult part is when you reach the max count that you can use the max count as additional, you know, in, for, for that. And, you know, and the same stability condition apply uh, for the other aggregate, okay? So negation is only used to compute the final value for count. Thus, the formal property guarantees stable model semantics for count also hold for the other aggregates and their combination, all right? Which is kind of nice. And this, of course, is very important 
that we have some unified semantics because most algorithms, complex algorithms, use combination of algorithms. For instance, one of the oldest algorithms is the k-means, alloid, where we have given a large set of d-dimensional points, okay? And for each, uh, you know, and then we are using some initial, uh, initialization routine to assign a value, to assign to a certain number of centroids, okay? All right. And that's done in rule I, right, in rule one, okay? Then in rule two, we find that for each point or n centroid, compute the sum of the square of the distances. In other words, compute the distance of each, for each point and each centroid, okay? And then in rule three, you know, for each point, we uh, compute the, the centroid, which is uh, the closest to this, uh, to this point, whereby by taking the average of all of the coordinates of, of all points which are close to a given centroid, we can compute the new centroid, the one which will be used in the next step, all right? And these are the four rules which express this program, okay? <clears throat> One interesting property of this program is that we are using a fixed number of centroid and fixed number of point. So if you think of that our oh, semantics count base, our step one semantic count base, immediately realize this, this um, number of centroid and numbers of uh, points can be computed even before the uh, in the end to the recursive computation, whereby basically we could actually not use uh, max in the in the in the recursion, and we don't we can use just a, a stratified program where first we compute uh, the the max uh, and then we compute we compute the cardinality and then we use that cardinality in the uh, computation, right? Of course, formal semantics is just the first step. The next step is compilation optimization to get performance, okay? For we have optimization techniques specialized for aggregate for the same naive fixed point, okay? And then we have a special property called pre-mappability, which uh, we apply to max, and that allows to optimize the comp counter computation of, uh, of the count. And then we now, and those are the logical uh, optimization. At the physical level, on Apache Spark, we has used special RDDs, which do not shuffle automatically. That is optimized decide when to shuffle. Okay, and this for implementation multi, um, you know, on distributed system like Apache Spark. We also work on implementation multi-core system where we exploit the state synchronous parallelism, which is, you know, a more advanced uh, uh, kind of parallelism, which uh, more advanced than the bulk synchronous parallelism, and is made possible by the fixed point semantics, okay, that we have. Uh, all right. And of course, we use the same um, basic implementation for both uh, uh, Rascal and Rad Ra Data Log. In fact, I have a first set of experiments will show you use Rascal because, in fact, there's been more than 12 uh, graph database systems which have been developed for this kind of applications. And so it's very encouraging that when we compare our system, we find that it normally outperforms those systems, you know, it can outperform those systems. Uh, for instance, Rascal outperforms the big data log, which is our previous system, which we developed and, you know, I presented data at the Sigma four years ago. And then, Also perform well graph and is very competitive with giraffe. Okay, giraffe is very competitive. We have also to perform media every very competitive with giraffe. Uh, okay, uh, so that's good because both giraffe and graph were 
and query language is very specific for these applications, right? And you know, the query we use are the typical query that I use uh, for this uh, application. And the, the, the data sets are those uh, from that you see there. All right. On the other hand, if when we go to data log, we, we basically de develop uh, the batch graded descent on, on data log. And on top of that, we put the number of uh, machine learning application, okay? And compare the result uh, with the MLib system ML and even PyTorch, okay? Here too, the results are quite encouraging, okay? For linear regression, logistic regression, um, and uh, you know, support vector machines. In fact, we seems to be performing uh, almost as well, of, uh, better or as well, uh, or somewhat comparable to <coughs> to uh, PyTorch and better than uh, SystemL on uh, databases which are not too large. On large databases, you know, PyTorch and system ML run out of memory because basically the expander sparse uh, data into matrices and that, uh, you know, means that they run out of memory, right? And that's what uh, the OOM there is shows, right? Okay, so what's the conclusion? The conclusion is that, uh, you know, also scalability uh, is also better and that those graph shows occurs, uh, you know, all right. So the conclusion is quite encouraging, but another encouraging uh, thing that we want to talk about is the possibility to have a synchronous parallelism. In general, procedure programs require step-by-step -step bulk synchronous parallelism to achieve correctness, okay? With fixed point semantics, step-by-step -step sync is no longer required. I know that complete step start the next step immediately, using the most recent result, from other nodes. Even when straddling nodes can only provide 10 result, since the same fixed point is finally produced. This is a synchronous parallelism that can reduce computation communication time. Now let's talk about the prem, which is used in the computational max for count, the max count, okay? The prem property basically states that uh, when you're given, you know, when you perform your computation step using the, you know, some sort of mapping, some sort of function t, if you want to, if you are going to maximize the result, you may start by maximizing the argument. So, you know, you have a max of t of i equal the max of t of max of i. So in other words, max can be pushed into recursion, which means you can optimize op the op computation and do early prune. And uh, you can optimize the state synchronous parallelism since the addition of the result often is no consequence. In fact, assume that only 10% of your um, system as straddlers, then, you know, in nine, if you pass around the uh, temporary result, or early result, there's a 90% chance that you will never have to revise them, okay? So, you know, and so the, that, that's about it, right? And in fact, um, we have some test, okay? For, you know, all pair shortest path on a multi, core system where we compare bulk synchronous parallelism with the state synchronous parallelism. And the state synchronous parallelism, of course, there is a parameter S, which is the max staleness allowed, okay? So uh, every node with has completed step J will take result from the other nodes, provided that the result are not older than three steps or S step, okay? Then a number of steps. For instance, for uh, S equal three, not older than three step, right? Of course, if the other, uh, the strata have not completed the J minus three step, then this node will wait for them to complete, okay? But otherwise it goes ahead and tells those 10 results, all right? Because anyway, things will be fixed, but by, by the fixed point will be fixed later, right? 
immediately we see that uh, with the bulk synchronous parallelism on the left, there is almost as much waiting time as there is uh, computation time. And that, of course, the overall time is, you know, is quite large. With uh, S equal to three, we reduce dramatically the uh, waiting time. And as a result, the overall computation time is reduced, okay? Of course, if you double the test synchronous, all right, then, you know, things don't get worked as well, because of course, you know, you have to undo, then the probability that you have to undo uh, premature results uh, is, uh, is quite large. So there is a, mark, a optimum S which needs to determine and to, in order to get optimum performance, but finally, you know, def definitely these results are encouraging, right? Another thing we have done, uh, we have tried to uh, make, uh, you know, our data log system a first class citizens in the Apache Spark ecosystem. We have provided a logical data frame to use data log like syntax to provide data frame based interoperability. Uh, this can make data log to a first class citizen in the Spark uh, uh, big data log ecosystem, one that can easily collaborate with other Spark libraries. Uh, so the logic algorithm libraries wrap the key data algorithms so they can now be used as those, so as in other Spark libraries, so PIP system can call. Uh, this is the first data log support in some interface to multiple programming language, Python, Java, Java, and Scala. So this not only will make things easier for the data log program, but we hope we will induce other uh, users to try data log or borrow some, some of our routines and eventually try data log on their own, okay? Conclusion. Recursive data log with aggregates become a powerful language for the creative programming, providing technology that can be easily used by other query languages, okay? Superior performance and uh, scalability demonstrated on a um, wide range of big data applications, including graph application, KDD application, mail application. Much of research work is still at the preliminary stage, but the results obtained so far are quite encouraging. Of course, using query language for developing complex application could be a first for most programmers. And, to, and that's the reason why we emphasize uh, the need to make the formal semantic wise quite simple, okay? By providing criteria which guarantee stable model without the impact the people having to understand much about stable model. And, uh, and the, and the framework of L frame LB for easy familiarization integration with existing application. So that concludes my talk, but before that I would like to thanks to the many people who have contributed to this research, my students and visitors, and so thank you for today's attendance. <laughs>